Shalom, shalom. I greet you from my veranda in Uganda, and I trust that this message today blesses a lot of hearts that are listening. It is, I think, one of the key messages that we as Christians need to embrace. We need the Holy Spirit. And I want to show you what, uh, what the, in Acts, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, we read here, for 40 days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him, and, he, and uh, he talked with them about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about. The gift my father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then... Uh, it says here, uh, when, when the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, the times and occasions are set by my father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will, when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven and they watched him and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away when two men dressed in white, in dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up to the, at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. And I believe we are now living in the time where we are expecting the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and to get his bride, yeah? And you know, it's, it's very amazing because in, in Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were seated. Then they saw that what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And I tell you, I counted it, there were 17 different groups, language groups present, and they all heard the message in their tongue. And then some of them made fun, but uh, some were made fun uh, of these believers and said, they are, they are drunk, they are all drunk. And then Peter said, no. Uh, Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions and your old men will see to have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, will, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders in the earth below. There will be blood fire, uh, blood, fire and thick smoke. The sun will be dark and so on. You can read. It's absolutely amazing. But, you know, we, will, we need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is bringing God's life into our heart. He is, he is just... 
but what each one of us needs. Without the Holy Spirit, we are not yet where we are supposed to be. In uh, uh, Acts, uh, let me see, chapter 2. Yeah, chapter 2, verse 38, we read, Peter said to them, Each one of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. For God's promise was made to you and your children and to all who are far away, all whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Hallelujah. And, and you know, it, it's, it's, you're not yet on the level that God wants you to be as a Christian unless you have invited the Holy Spirit, unless you have asked for the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and I want to tell you now here quite a few scriptures that show you how wonderful the Holy Spirit is. I couldn't live without the Holy Spirit anymore. The Holy Spirit comforts. In Acts 9.31 we read, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. Then in Ephesians 1.17, the Holy Spirit gives clarity. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Then the Holy Spirit gives you energy. In Ephesians 3.16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through, the, through his spirit in your inner being. The Holy Spirit leads you into the truth that sets you free. In John 16.13, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Then uh, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus Christ to you. In John 16, 14, he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. Then the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. When he comes, we read that in John 16, 8. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Then the Holy Spirit makes us courageous. In 2 Timothy 1, 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Then... The Holy Spirit makes God's love felt to us in Romans 5.5. 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who, was, who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit is the best friend that you will ever become in your, uh, get in your life. The Holy Spirit transforms our character. In Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit gives peace. In Jude 1, 20 to 21, we read, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Then the Holy Spirit sets you free. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit awakens prayer in us. In Romans 8.26, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through world, world, uh, wordless groans. Then, uh, 
I mean, it, it's a real experience, the Holy Spirit, in Acts 2, 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then in Acts 1, 14, we should ask for the Holy Spirit. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and Bernice's brother. And then it says in Luke eleven thirteen, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Yeah, the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And we need the Holy Spirit for that. So, you know, I, I have been living now with the Holy Spirit for many, many years. And, uh, and I, I couldn't imagine a life anymore without depending on the Holy Spirit. You know, <coughs> I'm a woman. And uh, I was asked many years ago already to preach because people said, you have a message, why don't you preach? I said, well, 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 you know, the word of God, you know, says women should be quiet in the, in the, in the church. So I, I can't preach. I can't. I'm not allowed to. Then somebody said to me, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit how he sees that whole thing? And you know what? It was amazing. It was amazing. Because I said, Holy Spirit, how do you see us women? The Bible says we should be quiet in the church. And he said, well, this was a misinterpretation. And I have been in synagogues in Israel already. And I know that the women are like in a little chicken coop. The men all sit there in front, but the women are all locked up in a little corner. And, uh, and you know, some women, when they didn't understand what the rabbi was saying, were screaming, uh, John, what does it mean? What does he say? And the rabbi said, you ask your, your, your husband at home. You be quiet in church. You ask your husband at home. So, and I, I was there myself in, in synagogues, and that's the truth. And uh, so it, it was, because if the Bible says when women prophesy, they should wear, uh, uh, cover their heads. Prophesying to me is even more anointing than preaching. So, uh, <clears throat> I said, well, Lord, you know, I, I, I do understand that there must be a misinterpretation. The Lord said, besides that, Maria, I already spo spoke through donkeys. Yes, the Lord used already donkeys to speak to a stubborn prophet. And, uh, and I said, but Lord, uh, can I preach? He said, of course, but don't preach in order to put yourself above men. And so, you know, I only go where I am invited by pastors that give me that spiritual covering. And now, I mean, I, I don't, my identity is not a preacher. I am just sharing the good news that the Lord has shared with me. And uh, I want to set women free. You can preach as the Lord gives you the opportunity, as you are invited to preach. And you know, women, they have to speak to their children the gospel and preach the gospel. And uh, it's holy mothers that produce holy children. And they will speak the truth. And that is also preaching, my dear. So <clears throat> for me, the Holy Spirit is the best friend I ever had in my life. And I advise you to really ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence to reveal to you the greatness and goodness of God, and also to give you the gift of tongues. And the gift of tongues is not a gift that you learn from here, but it comes from out here. So you just need to release yourself and say, Holy Spirit, now I give you my tongue to speak in another tongue. You don't need to understand it. And it will come and flow, you will see. So I do trust that all that listen to this message now will get into a new revelation of the needs that you have for the Holy Spirit to come and penetrate your life 
and, and uh, lead you into the truth that sets you free and speak to you. And you can ask the Holy Spirit. I ask all the time questions and the Holy Spirit answers me. So Father, I pray that everyone that listens to this YouTube now will get a new dimension of eagerness to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and not only once, but to permanently walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And listen to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to use them as he leads them every day, you know. God has a plan for every day and the Holy Spirit will lead you and show you what he has prepared in heaven, what the Father has prepared in heaven so that you can take it down on earth. We have prayed for centuries, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is on heaven, in heaven. And we walked out of that building that we call church, but this God never wanted to live in a building. He wanted to live in you and me. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to be open for the Holy Spirit to flood this temple and to flow through this temple and to use this temple to glorify God wherever we are. We are, and darlings, this is a high calling. Our Father is the King of Kings. We are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. We are princes and princesses. We are a mouthpiece of God. We are the potential of, in God's hands. We are representatives of the King of Kings. We are ambassadors of the King of Kings. There is no higher calling for anybody in this world. So I want to challenge you. Seek the connection with the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit to flood you with the presence of the living God. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>